now recording is on. So welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, I put several um, action that I would like to discuss in this meeting in the Google Doc. Um, so the first one is obviously the ticket infra 910, which is about automating Jenkins core releases. Um, we did up to day, up to now, we did three releases. Uh, the third one was a real success. So um, I think it's uh, it's ready that um, we start looking at the security and uh, the stable one. I have a meeting for the security uh, releases. I have a meeting with Daniel tomorrow to discuss how we can implement um, artifact promotion. So the, the main requirement that the security team has is that they want to be able to um, release a new Jenkins version, publish that in a private um, Maven repository. And once it's approved, they can promote that from the Maven repository to the to the, to the master one, to the one that everybody is using. Um, so we just have to modify a little bit the Jenkins 5 parameter to support that. Um, and I will also would like to introduce um, real artifact promotion. So not only uh, we push, I mean, so we could also use that for the for the weekly release, which would simplify the process. So we can, for example, release in advance, for example, on Sunday, and then officially uh, promote, let's say, on Monday morning when everybody's uh, available. Um, so that that would be the idea. Um, and once once the security once it's supported on the security um, part, then we can start working on the on the on the stable. Um, for the stable releases, I think the most important work need to be done uh, is on the communication. So we have um, a secure and reliable way to communicate about any change uh, on the stable releases. Um, but yeah, otherwise, from a technical point of view, I do not expect um, any major uh, difficulties. Any question regarding this? So no. you you said you'll discuss with Daniel. So. We, are you now sometimes security things have to be kept relatively quiet do you have a sense of how much of that you can share publicly later i mean the, certainly the code will eventually be public because we can we can see the or there are many portions that are public what portions are you sensing oh you can't we won't, won't be able to discuss that publicly it'll have to be kept uh private because of the security processes so basically in the security process uh the person who report a security issue uh will have um a private communication with the security team so they can work on security issues and so the idea here and that's uh, what daniel is already doing with the current process so the idea is when you want to release a new version it just um trigger the release on a specific branch and push the artifact in a private uh, repository. So it's still it's still on repo.jenkinsia.org, except that only the security team and the people who contribute the security, um, um, who reported the security issue can download the Jenkins version, test, do whatever they need to do. And once they're already, they promote that specific version to the master branch, and then it becomes public and everybody has access to this. Um, so uh, being able to really have um, um, promotion of artifact is something really important for the security. Um, we kind of already support uh, staging environments in the current release process. So if we just want to change the Maven repository where we push the artifacts, this is something that we can do. Um, the same for the packages. So right now we can um, generate the packages. We push those packages in a staging directory. And the last step of the, the packaging job is to move those um, is to move those artifacts to the to the right website. So okay. Um, so the idea is really to, to 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 discuss with Daniel how we can modify the current release process to also have um, package promotion uh, between different Maven repositories. So um, it's I mean that's what I'm saying. It's important for the security process. But it would also be interesting for the um, the weekly and the stable releases because it means that we could push to a staging repository and once when we are ready we just promote from that Maven repository which is not publicly available to the official one where people um, can access because um, the way I understand it right now when we trigger a new release once the Jenkins is published on the Maven repository 
people receive a notification in the Jenkins instance saying that a new version is available, but they cannot install it yet because we first need to package for the specific, let's say, um, Debian or whatever. Um, so the idea is really to have um, like a real staging um, um, process. Okay, so so and you it sounds like you're you're aware then and ready for the things like packaging the Debian patch packaging the RPM doing the Docker image generation, things that are all downstream of the war file creation, but really shouldn't be disclosed publicly until the security release is ready. Great. Thank you. Um, so the next topic um, that, I mean, the change over the last week, uh, we started using Fastly for multiple websites. So we first uh, configure it uh, for plugins at Jenkins at IOM, um, accepted minor glitch. Um, I think it was a, um, it was a success. Um, it was easy to put in place, um, and it scaled very well. So we started using it for package of Jenkins.io and Jenkins.io. For Jenkins.io, we had to switch from the Apex domain to the um, to the subdomain www. Um, the main advantage of doing this is uh, first we support IPv6, so you can go there uh, using um, yeah using IPv6 addresses, and um, otherwise uh, it's not so. The main the main limitation of the Apex domain, uh, at least in Fastly, is that because you cannot have a C name uh, on the Apex domain, you have to be redirected to a specific IPs. Um, so there is one IPs that have all the loads. But if we use the CNAME way, 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 the Jenkins that I, we can redirect to four different IPs on Fastly uh, network. So this um, make it um, more robust. Um, and so that, that was the main, the main limit. And then regarding package of Jenkins that I, that was uh, also easy to, 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 to switch. The main, the main challenge that we have here is Package of Jenkins at IO, the, 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 the endpoint is in front of a machine called Package of Jenkins at IO. I know it's not, I mean, it's not easy, but um, this is really something that you have to understand here. And the package, the Jenkins at IO machine, um, has some, um, I mean, it's not able anymore to handle the load that happened during the morning uh, Europe time and morning US time. And so basically, um, every week at around the same periods, um, basically what happened is uh, the Apache is not able to handle all the requests. And so um, we have a lot of timeout issues. Um, because we switch the service package of Jenkins.io and we put that service on Fastly, it reduced the loads on the machine. But um, we still have a, a small, I mean, a, a smaller period of time where the machine is overloaded. And so one of the other things that we change for package of Jenkins audio for the, from a Fastly point of view. And now if the origin is failing, Fastly will, will return um, artifact from its network. So the idea is um, it just put an additional protection. Um, using using Fastly for package of Jenkins audio, um, it's, I mean, give us more time to basically work on the machine so the machine can be able to handle uh, um, the two other websites. Um, so basically, this is Mirrors, the Jenkins IO, and uh, the Update Center. Um, the Update Center um, use most of the traffic um, and need to be refactored um, or whatever. Or maybe maybe we just have to fine tune the Apache configuration. I mean, there, there, there are some improvements that we need to do on that machine. Um, one of the one of the other challenge that we have with that machine is that because of the number of services running on there, um, we cannot um, use the puppet. I mean, we cannot easily configure it uh, using puppet. Um, so yeah, that that specific machine is still in a um, in a state where we need to to I mean to to, to improve it uh, basically. Um, any question be before I move on the next mirror brain, which is uh, mirror the uh, video, which is kind of related to this? So another thing, yeah, something that I also forget to mention. Um, so in the past, package of Jenkins that I was configured. Uh, someone is typing on the, on the mic. Is it Mark? Mark, your, your keyboard? No, it's not you. I don't that think so. Me. I think it, I was, was muted. 
No, no it was sorry. Me. I apologize. That's that's okay. Um, another thing that I that I that I, that I another change that I introduced on package.jenkins.io. So basically, package.jenkins.io is a website um, that returns metadata information for Debian, Red Hat, and Suze uh, repository. So if you want, let's say, to install Jenkins from Debian, your um, your installer will go to through package.jenkins.io. And so one, so basically, what what's happening in the uh, on the back is that if it needs to return you a package, it will ask, uh, let's say, the, the specific Debian version that you want to, to install. And so since four years, that package of Jenkins that I was configured to fetch um, artifact from an Azure blob storage. So basically, the request was sent to package of Jenkins that I then sent to an Azure blob storage, and and so on. Um, instead of relying on the mirror infrastructure. Um, and so what I did here is I stopped um, redirecting and asking to the blob storage. Um, so I'm planning to just remove and deprecate that blob storage. So first it will reduce the time to upload packages to the blob storage because we don't need that um, steps anymore. Um, then it will also say uh, uh, it will also help us to to save some money. So first, we don't have to upload the packages there. We don't have to pay for the storage and so on. Um, so because it appeared that the resource group on Azure, uh, the next biggest cost uh, that we need to reduce is that that specific blob storage, uh, which is something like three hundred uh, three thousand dollar per month um, on bandwidth and storage. So um, so I just changed that configuration um, today, I think, or maybe yesterday, I'm not sure. Um, and nothing was broken. So basically, what's happening now is instead of fetching the, the artifact from, so from Azure, it fetched from the mirror. And then those, part, those artifacts are cached on, uh, on Fastly. Olivier, so that means yes. that there is a chance that our Fastly costs will increase potentially even beyond the costs of their sponsorship, but we would cover those costs through the funds that CDF has agreed to, to cover? Yeah, so basically, instead of paying on Azure, uh, that cost will move to Fastly, basically. So we just reduced the Azure uh, bill. Um, and while we're mentioning about the costs on Fastly, um, right now, I had a look, I mean, since the last week, uh, we use less, like, less than 100 um, dollars so right now the cost is not that huge so um i'm going to wait for the for the full months so i have the full picture but we may add more services on the fastly account That's cool. so just to be sure you just said that we've not yet used even 20 percent of our, our allocated sponsorship that is exceptional yes. okay yep. thank so, you so considering that plugins the plugins so plugins is running since i think um more than a week and package of Jenkins Radio and Jenkins Radio were added last week. So yeah, I, th I expect to have enough budget maybe to add an additional website there. But it needs to be confirmed in one month. And again, if you want to have an access to the Fastly account, uh, we still have some stats uh, there. So if you want to I mean, play with the stats and with information there, um, yeah, I can also invite you. Um, so any, any other questions regarding Fastly? So then the next topic that I want to, to highlight is that so now I fixed uh, the release process to in order to also upload packages to get the Jenkins.io. So it's getting more stable. Um, while we still have to change to, to reset the storage, at least now uh, weekly releases are also uploaded uh, to Mirror Brain. We, cannot, we still cannot use it uh, because uh, stable releases um, and security releases I mean, the current process for security releases and stable release do not upload packages to get the Jenkins.io, but at least um, uh, we are getting closer. And something also important is that that website currently could be used, for example, as a backend for package to Jenkins.io, but it cannot definitely it cannot be used for the update center uh, because we I didn't work on the update center to upload also uh, artifact there, so um, it won't work for them for that. So just for my clarity, 
get.jenkins.io, I still am mentally thinking of it as a pure prototype that you might, if you needed to, destroy completely and recreate, that anyone depending on it is should not expect 100% reliability. If they need reliable, they should go to pkg.jenkins.io is the official face of the project for right now. Is that is that a safe assumption or have I misunderstood? So, so you, you understood almost everything correctly. So basically, get.jenkins.io is just a, it's just a replacement of mirrors.jenkins.io. Mirror.jenkins.io is using a tool called Mirror Brain, um, which does not seem to be maintained since years now. Um, and that requires a, a specific uh, environment. And that's one of the reasons why uh, the package.jenkins.io machine itself cannot be uh, updated anymore because it requires specific uh, Python libraries and stuff like this. And so um, each time I try to update the machine, it broke either the release environment or um, the mirror brain. So that's one of the things. And so get the Jenkins that I do is using, sorry, uh, we have mirror brain. Get the Jenkins that I do is using a different tool called mirror bits uh, from the VLC project. And so the approach is a little bit different. Um, it's still a service in front of multiple mirrors. So you, it's using the same mirrors. Um, it just like, um, it provides HTTPS. Um, so it supports HTTPS. So um, what, which uh, mirror brain does not, um, and few uh, more and few other uh, feature, um, just like a more, more recent. The thing is the biggest challenge that I'm facing with that service is to just upload the right information um, to the service. So it's definitely a prototype. It can be deleted at any time. And more importantly, it's not, I mean, it's not because uh, a package has been published to get the Jenkins radio that it's the right package. Um, so it's really like, um, it's not the most urgent thing that I'm working on. So I just try to have it uh, stable enough. And so once it's stable, the idea is to replace get the Jenkins that I use, just use mirror brain, a uh, mirror the Jenkins that I use, just switch. The, I mean, put it back to the mirror the Jenkins that I use. So the idea is really to replace mirror brain by mirror bits. Um, but we are not there. We are not here. We are not there yet. Thank you. Um, so I think it's pretty old from my part. Um, I think the last topic that you want to discuss is, um, Seattle Jenkins that I go. Mark, yes, do you want and, to... and I don't know that there's much to say there, but let me, I'll, I'll take the, a brief, brief highlight. So special thanks to Tim Jacome for the guidance on safe, safely guiding me away from doing a premature upgrade when it would have been dangerous. Uh, plugins on Jenkins, ci.jenkins.io were upgraded this morning, uh, so earlier today. As part of that upgrade, we avoided a problem that was known to have occurred in the Azure Credentials plugin. Tim was, was kind enough to flag that. We unfortunately did encounter a problem with the EC2 plugin. It has some a known bug that Gunter was w able to highlight for me very quickly, and we rolled back one version, restarted, and everything was fine. Uh, I okay. think we've all agreed that we want safer upgrades for ci.jenkins.io in the future, and Helm charts, et cetera, or other forms of upgrade tests are, are coming eventually. So just, just regarding uh, recommendation for upgrading ci.jenkins.io, so right now, CI uh, the Jenkins IO is still using um, um, the stable version. So I think it's a type like uh, GDK 11 uh, dash stable or something like that. Uh, which means that each time we need to upgrade it, we just have to pull the new the new Docker image. Um, so upgrade is not yet automated, and it's not managed by Helm at the moment because CI the Jenkins IO is still running on a bare metal machine. Um, while we use uh, Docker for it, it's not running on Kubernetes. Um, Tim Jacob opened a PR uh, to deploy it on Kubernetes. The main thing here is that I don't want to use public Kubernetes for the CI environment because um, public, the current Kubernetes cluster is quite critical and we don't want to use it for CI the Jenkins and IO. But we have to deploy a new Kubernetes cluster uh, on Amazon. Um, this is something that uh, we need to work on and it's in the current the pipe. So um, some help is needed here. I mean, not needed, but would be useful. So basically the idea is, it would be nice to have some Terraform codes to deploy and configure the Amazon environments. So that's um, 
what's needed at the moment. I'm happy to help there, but I think is the access is still limited to cloud base on the AWS yes. account, as far as I know. Yep, it's still the case. Um, so while so yeah, so this bring another topic. Um, we are currently in the process to transfer the Azure account to the CDF. So while it does not immediately affect the Amazon, the, the Amazon account, it means that uh, we are starting the transfer um, of the Jenkins account to CDF, which will some, so I hope it will simplify then uh, the move for the Amazon. Um, and it's almost, I mean, it's also important uh, that billing transfer for the simple reason is that when we had a new service currently on the Jenkins project, we usually uh, put our own information. So for example, in the case of Fastly, I put my credit card. Uh, in the case of the Azure accounts, it was KK uh, credit cards. And so this is something that we would like to, this is something that we don't want to do anymore. Um, yeah. So for example, in the case of Fastly, it's not a big risk because sponsoring cover everything, but I would feel more comfortable uh, once uh, everything is moved to CDF. So, and uh, that sounds great. Thank you. Anything else then, Olivier, that I'm, did I miss any notes on the ci.jenkins.io topic? It seems like we continue as we are for now. We have a vision that we want to go to Kubernetes and that that Kubernetes would be on a, a new cluster, not on the existing cluster. And that new cluster therefore won't, won't be hosted in Azure. It would uh, thus biasing towards AWS for the current, current choice yep. of infrastructure. Yep. Um, now, if we could get sponsorship from another cloud provider, are we open to consider, a, I guess not because we've got sponsorship already from AWS. Exactly. So we have sponsorship for from AWS for the for the coming at least for the coming year, um, and so we have to move for our CI infrastructure needs. So Great. yeah, that's that that I mean that was that was why um, that was the topic of our discussion uh, with the AWS guys, um, and they were happy to help us. And so yeah, so we are definitely planning to deploy CI on Kubernetes. Great. All right. If help is needed uh, to set up any automation for deployment to uh, Azure, I can help. If... To Azure or to Amazon, you mean? Amazon, excuse me. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, yep. Yeah. I'll try. I'll try to see if I can um, have an exception so I can add more people, um, external people on the cloud under this cloud these accounts. Um, this is something that I have. I will investigate. Okay, that would simply I mean that that would simplify a lot in the management of it. Yeah, although we've still got, I think, core release automation is still our first focus. So, ci.jenkins.io right now is just not as critical as getting core release automation running, security, and LTS builds. Yeah, so my my focus is still the core release automation project. Um, I do not expect it to be a big work. Um, Depending on my meeting with, um, depending on the output of my meeting with Daniel tomorrow, um, yeah, I have I, mean, I have a better view. But um, I think we already have most of the the components. The, the, the I mean, the only thing regarding the core release automation, the only thing that I'm not sure yet is how to have um, different how to call the different profiles. So is it better to have multiple Jenkins file uh, with specific parameters? Should we move most of the Jenkins file to a shared library? And then just have Jenkins file for the weekly, for the stable, for the security. Um, should we just call everything from one Jenkins file? So that that was the design right now. But now that I realize, for example, that uh, the security need to change different parameter than the weekly arm. Um, yeah, it's more like um, that's that, that's the only thing that I mean. But uh, but otherwise, the, the skeleton is the same for the three different releases. We just have to adjust a different parameter. Um, yeah, otherwise, I think um, we are almost um, getting to the end. So is there is there any last topic that you want to mention, um, highlight, uh, we should focus for the next week? Yeah, I was just wondering if there's anything that we can do to help with the stability of package and updates. Um, there seem, it seems to be almost daily where it's crashing. Um, so uh, it's, it's probably not quite daily, but it seems to be almost daily where connection timeouts and um, there's users complaining, or even even I had it when I was updating our instance. 
last week where you just couldn't download updates. So the, the, the so one of the changes I don't know if you if we if we already impacted the package. So the data that I know that I changed the modification of Fastly to um, return content if Fastly has the content cached. Um, so I'm not sure if it will um, have if it will have the same impacts. Um, yeah, it's it's more for plugins, I think. Um, it's, it's when it's when Jenkins is doing like, the check now to try and get the updates center.json file or the so that's the one that users normally complain about. So they hit check now to update plugins or they try and boot. Um, and it's getting connection timeout to updates.jenkins.io. Um, the, the, there was users complaining this morning about package.jenkins.io, but it's not as often. So so Tim, the and the Fastly work, will the Fastly work help with the plugin update center download? Um, or no? It's only it's been set up on package, so they're on the same they're on the same VM. So, in theory, it should help, but we're still having issues. Okay. So, so, so the the updates.json file is not actually delivered by the fast fastly network. No, no, it's not. Ah, okay. And it's not. And the thing that I fear here is that, but what I fear is that if we use it for um, if we use it for Update center. I just feel that we will use too much um, bandwidth, and so it yeah, just, uh, yeah. And I wasn't proposing we should use it. I think Tim's got a good question, though. Is there anything we can do to stabilize the the delivery of those updates to improve them? Are there are there steps we can take that that are obvious to you, Olivier, that might not be obvious to me yet? So uh, basically, the the, the 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 two places where um, I looked. So the first one, so yeah, I started looking looking at it multiple times. Um, and so we have uh, different ways that we can improve the situation. The first one is to increase the VAM size. This is something that I did last uh, year in June because of the same reason. So the issues that we have on package of Jenkins.io, updates the Jenkins.io is something that affect us since more than a year. It's just that at the beginning it was, um, I mean, it's just that the log is increasing month after month. So the, the downtime is just bigger and bigger. So we need to find a way to, to to solve this. So first, I increase the, 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 the VM size. Um, it just delayed the problem, and now the pro problem is back again. Uh, the second thing is I had a look to Mirror Brain to see if we could um, fine tune the configuration. Um, while I see that um, there are a lot of errors re uh, regarding the mirror brains and the database um, on the machine, so we had like 500 gigabytes of error just saying like, um, um, some information were missing, some, some cache information were missing. Um, so I don't know if I shared this information. Um, uh, in a the, the, the biggest challenge with package, I think, is that IO. It's, that it's a really critical machine with a lot of services running on it. Um, mm. is it would, would it be a lot of work to, to split them off onto different machines? Or so, even moving some, moving some of it to Kubernetes? So that that was so that was that that was something that I started uh, with package Jenkins.io, get the Jenkins.io uh, and update center. The biggest challenge here is that so we have three services running on that machine. We have so that's what I said: package Jenkins.io, update center, and the house. Uh, on top of that, we also have um, the release tools for Red Hat and OpenSUSE on that machine. Because when we generate Red Hat package, we SSH on the machine, generate the packages there, and, and, and that. And that machine is also configured to uh, upload to the different uh, mirrors. Um, so we have quite a lot of, of, of stuff there. And so it's something that I, that I would like to have, just remove package or Jenkins that I use there from there. Um, same for the update center. And so just keep that machine just like um, a, a big uh, storage. Uh, and, and that's it. Um, yeah. But I think once we can get rid of Mirror Brain, it will already uh, solve um, our issues. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm currently not sure the best. So I, I think I think the best way maybe is that uh, I could grab access to Tim Jacob to that machine, and so maybe you could see how how it could help. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be useful. At least then I can possibly fix the issues before others come online as well um, and, and just understand and understand the layout of it a bit better. 
So I, I just specifically for that, that machine, I proposed to, to set up a call with uh, Tim Jacobs so we can see how we can work uh, on that specific problem because, um, yeah, that, that machine is quite big with a lot of different services and it's quite hard to, yeah, it's, it's hard to understand if you don't see it uh, and if you don't have access to it. And it's also, and, and, and so also something important is because that machine is running for a really long time, you have a lot of scripts there, you have a lot of tools. And so when you modify something, um, it has some sites. So basically what happened in the past multiple time, like um, each time I try to modify or remove one service there, um, it broke something else. Uh, a simple example that happened last week, um, when we switched package jenkins.io to Fastly, um, initially it sounds like a good idea. And then I realized that um, multiple scripts were calling package or Jenkins that I use to SSH on the machine to upload files. But because package or Jenkins that I was not used by Fastly, um, basically all those scripts try to SSH on Fastly machine to upload files, which is, I mean, does not work. And so that was a small change. Um, and yeah, it took, I mean, it took me quite a lot of uh, I mean, several hours to just review the script and fix those scripts and discuss with the different people involved there and especially because, okay. And so, yeah, that, yeah, that machine is something like, it's an important machine, and yeah, it's difficult to not modify it without breaking stuff. All right. Yeah, let's let's talk about this separately. But it would be good to not have such important machine and break it down a little bit. I think. Yeah. Yep, definitely. So um, I propose to stop. So we are running over um, the time. So I propose to finish the meeting here. Um, if you have anything that you think that we should uh, prioritize, feel free to, to look at the, the, the Google Docs, uh, add attempts, or just ask on our team. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Olivier. Thank you. Have a good day. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>